welcome back to episode 104 of Talk of Fame podcast with your host, Kelly Montigny. And I'm so excited to have on Associate Editor for People, Dory Jackson. Thanks so much. Come on, Dory. Thanks for having me. And so while working with People, you got to interview a long list of celebrities from Kate Hudson to Pierce Bronson and to Billy Porter. How has working with People magazine helped you as a journalist with interviewing some top tier celebrities? I think it's just getting the opportunity to practice talking to these people. Mm -hmm. The more I'm doing it, the better I'm getting at it, the more insightful my questions have gotten, the more comfortable I've gotten doing these things. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine life not doing this at this point. I love doing interviews so much and you get to learn about people and see a different side of these people that you see on the screen or Mm -hmm. magazines that you wouldn't normally. Mm -hmm. And so like, like, did you ever like imagine working with people or is this something like, oh, it's just something last minute you're like, oh my God, this is something like I never realized doing when I was a kid. Yeah, well, when growing up, I had read People magazine as a kid because that was one of the few magazines my mom brought home. It was People, Entertainment Weekly, which are both owned by my current parent company, which is really cool. And to be working at such a big publication that's so known and has such a like legendary past it's Mm -hmm. a dream come true on so many levels I never could have envisioned I would end up here Mm -hmm. where I'm at but I'm so grateful (laughs) because it's really a dream opportunity and I know it sounds cheesy when people say that but it's so true Mm -hmm. it really is and since like people magazine is such like one the biggest maybe the biggest like published magazine there is especially in the U.S. Mm -hmm. like what is like the toughest part for you about working for people because obviously people think you might be the easiest thing ever since the biggest public publication in news outlet for celebrities entertainment there is but like what is like the hardest kind of thing to do like while working for people as like a journalist or anything I think it's just learning to find balance because when you're in news media, there's so much uh, fast paced stuff that you're doing. Today alone, I was um, helping my team with uh, Jennifer Aniston's father, unfortunately passed. And so Mm -hmm. we have to really be on it and like think of very quick follow-ups so we can um, make sure we're getting the most out of this story as possible. Mm -hmm. And with cases like that, it's just learning how to be quick and speedy and efficient while also being clean, making sure you're paying attention to everything. And that just comes with figuring out a balance and a rhythm for yourself. And that's not something that's easy. And mm-hmm. it's something I'm still learning. It's something I've been learning ever since I started in journalism and I've gotten mm-hmm. better at it. But, you know, there's always ways to improve in that area. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so you previously co-hosted Idol Nation podcast. Like, can you tell us more about the podcast and what the true meaning of the podcast went? Yes. So I had come into that podcast. It was pre-existing already, and it was more American Idol focused at the time. And they decided to shift gears once their original co-host left, and I came in uh, through a friend that was friends with the former co-host or she still is co-hosting that with somebody else now but it was basically we had this idea to explore different areas of pop culture and why people are obsessed with these things or Mm -hmm. examine certain things that were interested interesting to us like one of my favorite episodes was when we explored the movie Aloha which was Emma Stone and Riley Cooper and Rachel McAdams and that came out several years ago and it was super controversial at the time for mainly Emma Stone being cast in a role that was meant to be an Asian person um but the film also was just terrible regardless of that so it's just fun like picking at it because I'd never seen the film prior Mm -hmm. And we got to do fun stuff like that and explore topics that I love to talk about, like the Bachelor franchise and Mm -hmm. Paltrow, (laughs) stuff like that. Yeah, did you always love entertainment or was this something you did as like for a good job? Yeah, I grew up loving entertainment and I blame my mother every day for that, but for the best reasons, like we would watch all the big award shows together Mm -hmm. and I would predict which 
people I would think would win a category. And I got really good at that. And in mm-hmm. college, I actually threw little gatherings in my dorm room with my friends um, for big award shows like the Oscars, the Globes. And I would get little printout ballots for everybody and get like snacks and food. And I even did that a little bit when I was here, first living here in New York. Mm-hmm. But since my job is very much focused on covering these big award shows now, I don't get to throw those parties parties anymore but maybe one day yeah like like how did you like I always loved entertainment since I was a kid like that's like the only yeah. thing I do is watch entertainment or cover entertainment or that's really the only <laughs> thing I focus but like how did you kind of first start out as a journalist like how did you kind of first start getting experience and stuff like that yeah well funnily enough I didn't intend on actually doing journalism before I did I was an econ business major and I was failing that class miserably. And I had a tutor outside of the class and I also went into my teacher. And once I failed like a midterm exam, we were going over the exam with my professor. And he asked me, he's like, what are your grades in your other classes? And I said, I have all A's and B's. He's like, I don't think you should be in my class. And I said, you know what? I don't think so either. So I ended up withdrawing and I was focusing more on my English class. And I realized I actually was pretty decent at writing. And that wasn't something I really noticed until I got to college. And maybe it was just because I had more of an opportunity to explore Mm -hmm. writing with different topics outside of just, you know, your general English book or your standardized test situation. Mm -hmm. And I said, hmm, maybe I should see where this could go. So I ended up applying for internships locally. I'm from Maryland and I ended up getting an internship at a local DC publication. Mm -hmm. And it was fashion focused actually, because I always had an interest in fashion as well. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see, maybe I'll try fashion journalism. Um, And once that internship went well, they kept me on as a freelancer throughout the fall. And in December of 2013, it would have been, I was asked by my former internship boss if I wanted to go to Jingle Ball in DC and cover it for them. And I got on the red carpet and I did my first ever interview with all five women in Fifth Harmony. And that was the moment I knew I had to do this for the rest of my life. I don't know how we're gonna do this, but I'm gonna figure it out. And here we are now. I just continued doing internships along the way. I did some freelancing once I left college. I also edited for a YouTuber briefly before I got my first full-time job in New York City. And I was working at International Business Times, which was owned by Newsweek um, previously. And I was doing viral news, which was basically covering everything. I did entertainment, I did fashion, I did science, health, politics. It's whatever they needed me to do, whatever was trending, I was doing it. And I think that really helped me understand myself as a writer helped me grow as a writer and allowed me to become very versed in a lot of different topics and eventually I got promoted over to work at Newsweek and I was on their culture news team focusing on anything entertainment Mm -hmm. and that was what really I think kick-started everything for sure because I was getting to do these really big interviews my first big interview there was with Zoe Deschanel who is so big so that was Mm -hmm. like a really scary interview (laughs) but it worked out and she was lovely and from there on I just continued to get these really amazing interview opportunities and work at other brands I worked at Us Weekly before coming to People and I've been at People ever since yeah like you said like your first interview was Fifth Harmony like did you like Fifth Mm -hmm. Harmony or or even heard of them before you interviewed them or was it just like oh yeah I'm interviewing them and I saw you guys I go yeah, I knew who they were, luckily. Um, this was pretty early into their career, too. This would have been a little bit after they got off of the X Factor. Mm-hmm. And this was their first, like, big outing as a group going on these Jingle Ball tours. And it was a little nerve-wracking, but I will say what helped is um, Camila Cabello, in particular, made me feel very comfortable in that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, she came up and immediately hugged me. And then like all the girls and I were just standing like next to each other in this kind of like little line and we just kept talking. And she definitely in particular helped me feel most comfortable. And I've talked to a couple of them since and they're such lovely people. But (laughs) yeah, I think it's sometimes you're going to be in those cases where you've never met the person or not met the person, but you don't know who they are. And sometimes you just have to 
do it when you're on the red carpet, yeah. which is one of the more stressful parts of a carpet. And sometimes not everyone knows this, but they give out like tip sheets with the photos of the people that come. And so you'll get to have an idea. But mm-hmm. sometimes people aren't always on the tip sheets. Sometimes there's surprise people that come on. And my one of my best friends who works at Us Weekly had that happen to her recently as well, where she was on a red carpet and somebody came up to her and she was not prepared and just had to go with it and figure it out along the way. Oh my God, that's the worst feeling. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh God, help me. Right now. <laughs> oh, I this. But like in terms of like pop culture and stuff, like, did you ever listen to the new Taylor Swift album yet? I did. I am a huge Swifty. I love Taylor so much. I um, love this new album. And I'm excited because I just found out I got verified pre-sale. So I'm going to go get those tickets as soon as I can. <laughs> if I can, who knows? Like it's going to be complete chaos trying to get tickets to that yeah course. it's good but, like I know like, yeah. like in my hometown my in my state I know I'm from Pennsylvania originally like I know mm-hmm. she it has is doing like three Philadelphia shows and originally was supposed yeah. to be two and I'm like yeah, so stressed I think my dad got a code to it and I'm like the show every single show is probably gonna get sold out or most of them that's what I've noticed about too I picked one of the Pennsylvania dates as well in case the Jersey ones didn't work out I honestly don't know what to expect and I have to get six tickets so I'm very nervous <laughs> yeah and especially with the new album coming out everyone was like mm-hmm. freaking out and the only thing people were talking about is the album and the album is amazing I love it it is and that's really the only thing people are talking about right now like do you have like a favorite mm-hmm. Taylor Swift song from the album or a favorite song other than the album Well, on that album, I'm definitely loving The Great War, Karma, Mm -hmm. The Jeweled. I think those are probably my top three that I'm like constantly listening to. Mm -hmm. But in general, my favorite all-time Taylor Swift song is State of Grace from the Red Album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I love that song. The song's so good. Yeah, what about you? Or I love, Mm -hmm. um, which song is my favorite? We're Never Getting Back Together, probably. Yeah, or, that's a classic. For the ta- well, that's the song that um is that my for my favorite out of the album, it's probably Lavender. It's probably my favorite. That's a good one. But like that's I really opener. don't like I love all the songs off the album though, but if I had to choose the song I listen to most is probably Lavender. That's fair. That's a good one. <laughs> and so like what person like would you like to kind of interview in the future? Ah. Uh. That's so hard because there's so many people I've already talked to. But at the same time, there's so many people I still want to talk to. I'd love to someday interview one of the Kardashians Mm because they are pop culture icons. And I would love to just pick their brains. I just, I have so many questions. Mm -hmm. I would love to talk to Taylor, of course. Mm -hmm. This would be another interesting one. Um, Meryl Streep, Natalie Portman. Those are, I would say, the ones that are on the top of my mind always. I'm, like, thinking about those. Mm-hmm. Like, what can people expect from you, in the, like, in the next couple of months or towards the end of the year work as a journalist or with my people? Well, I have a couple of interesting interviews that are happening this week that I'm so excited about. I'm interviewing Jerry Seinfeld for the second time Ooh. on Wednesday. He's really nice. And I'm talking to Andy Cohen on Thursday. So that's just two things that are coming right now. I think the hard part is, though, with this job, and especially since our issues come out weekly, mm-hmm. we don't always know exactly what we're going to be doing every time. Sometimes it's quite well events, sometimes it's not. Mm-hmm. But that's sometimes the fun of it. <laughs> yeah. And so like, what are some qualities people should have to be a journalist? Definitely be curious. I think being of a curious mind is something that helps most journalists and that's what helps them ask better questions. I think somebody that is driven and determined to get a good story and to really be on top of things when it comes to the news cycle, that's going to help them in the long run as well. Mm -hmm. And also just networking. I've learned how important networking is in this field because you never know when you're going to need a rep for a celebrity for something in like whether that's an interview or whether you need to comment on a story or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's so important to keep up with those contacts. Exactly. And so the final question I have for you is what is some advice for people that are just kind of starting out as a journalist and want to make it like far in the industry and want to make connections? Well, it definitely depends on what stage you're in. If you're still a young one and you're entering college mm-hmm. or around that, definitely make sure you are 
really apply yourself in those journalism classes. Make sure that you are applying for internships, whether it's a big, big company or if it's a small one. I started smaller and smaller sometimes helps you because you might get opportunities that you might not at a bigger company because there's not as much, there's more, there's not as many people at the smaller companies. And so they're going to need people to be able to are hands on. And so when I was interning in LA at the smaller company, my boss was throwing me all these amazing opportunities because the team was smaller and the bandwidth was there for me to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And if you're somebody that's already a bit more, like if you decided, hey, yeah, maybe I want to actually pursue journalism, but you're already a bit older, a bit more established in a different area. Mm -hmm. I would say start by freelancing, start by pitching yourselves to other publications. And that can go for any age, honestly. Like if you find an editor and you have a story idea or sometimes websites will have like a little section where you can like pitch stories and stuff Mm -hmm. do that because that's a great way to get a byline on a really big website for sure Mm -hmm. and so I just want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast it was so great speaking with you you obviously are amazing I wish you you wish you the best of luck with everything and we'll definitely talk soon thank you so much thanks for having me of course talk to you soon okay bye thank you again